Hi there, I'm Chef Eric Crowley, owner of the Culinary Classroom in Los Angeles, and today we're going to make ganache glaze. Let's get started. So for a uh, ganache that we wind up utilizing to glaze a dessert or even uh, make a design on a plate, we're going to wind up making a ganache glaze. We're going to need uh, anywhere between one and a quarter to one and a half cups of cream. We have two tablespoons of unsalted butter, and we're also going to need about eight ounces of chocolate. In this case, we're going to use a semi-sweet chocolate. Any flavor of chocolate you wind up utilizing is just going to give you a different flavored ganache. This particular chocolate is Ghirardelli. Wind up utilizing a Guitard or Kaibo, uh, Scharfenberger, any really uh, high-end chocolate will wind up working really well. To start off with our preparation, we're going to take our one and a quarter cups of cream and we're going to start to put it into a pot and bring it up to just below a boil, what uh, pastry chefs call scalding. We're actually going to be looking for bubbles to come around the rim of the pot. Really important that you, of course, don't let the cream boil over, so when you start to heat it up, you want to keep an eye on it. Um, if you need more time, just turn the heat on to like a medium to a medium low, because if you have your heat on too high, then it's going to heat up too rapidly. So while I'm heating up my cream, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up the chocolate. I find that a bread knife or a serrated knife works really, really well for this particular task. And it's really important to get the chocolate chopped up or a lot of chefs would even call it shaving. I'm gonna take the tip of the knife and keep it in contact with the cutting board, use the back of the blade and basically just lean down on the handle and just cut some pieces like this. Okay. The smaller you cut the pieces of chocolate, the faster it's gonna melt. You can also move the chocolate around so you wind up getting a nice point. That winds up speeding up the chopping. It makes the pieces a lot easier to work. After I wind up chopping this, my cream is just starting to come to a, a scald. You can see some bubbling coming around the rim of the pot. I'm gonna warm that up just a little bit more. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna wind up taking a bowl and I'm gonna get my chocolate into it. Really important that before your chocolate goes into the bowl, you wind up making sure that the bowl is absolutely dry. Water and chocolate do not like each other. Make sure the bowl is really nice and dry. Chocolate's gonna go into the bowl. So this is our scalded cream. Might even start to get a little film or a skin on top. That's absolutely fine. Once it starts to get really nice and bubbly, I'm gonna take the cream and I'm gonna pour it over the chocolate. Chocolate does not need to be completely covered by the cream. I'll let it sit for about 30 more seconds. And I wind up taking a spatula, go right into the center of the pan. You could even do a wooden spoon, but I like a spatula to help really uh, cover the entire surface of the bowl. And I'm gonna take my spatula and start to slowly rotate it in a circular fashion. Working my way from the center of the bowl to the outer edges. All we really have left now is just a little bit around the edge of the bowl. Bring that into the center. Our basic uh, heavy cream and uh, chocolate mixture, once it's absolutely melted, in order to get a, a much uh, thinner, glazy consistency to it, we wind up putting in anywhere between two to three tablespoons of butter and stir that on in. And once the uh, butter gets completely melted into this mixture, we're gonna go ahead and refrigerate this just to chill it a little bit, not to get it totally firm, but definitely to make it not quite as soupy as this. And as it starts to firm up, we'll go ahead and be able to put it into a piping bag and be able to pipe out some glazy designs or even use it in a squirt bottle to go ahead and glaze a plate for a dessert. And that is our ganache glaze. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on other links so you can get other recipes. If you don't see something that interests you, email a request to requests at mahalo.com. Also be sure to subscribe so you can get lots of wonderful additional information. Thanks and I'll see you soon.